exactly what they did with her remains and how her remains helped medical science. So that was super cool when we put that on display there. The other thing that she made very specific was that in lieu of services, she wanted a memorial concert. And she sat down with me and in my handwritten notes on her advanced directive, she said, contact Dan Levitan. He will coordinate this for you. And so thank you. And to Dan's surprise, we contacted him. So thank you, Dan, for putting that all together. Uh, growing up, Beverly was my idol. She was my favorite aunt. She, I, I loved her to death. I, my youngest memory of Beverly is as a five-year-old, we got to see her playing the Nutcracker. And then we went down to the pit at intermission. And here was this huge harp and this, and this uh, above, rising above all the other instruments in the orchestra. And right then I decided that my Aunt Beverly played the most important instrument in the orchestra. <laughs> and she must have been the most important musician, too, because she was playing the harp. And from that moment on, I idolized her all my life. She was the single aunt who was the modern woman and going out and doing her own thing and loading up this harp in and out of her Volkswagen bus and driving her Volkswagen bus all around. <clears throat> the city and Oakland and then when she went moved up to Reno and playing all the shows in Reno and she just to me was the epitome of that strong independent woman who was going to do things her own way and anybody who knew her knows she stood by her principles and she stood by her convictions and stubbornly carried out things the way that she was going to do them and uh, and that always um, I just so admired that and so envied her for, for doing that and, and, and have been inspired my whole life and, and, and inspired by her musicianship. And then, as many of you might have read in the obituary, what was interesting was into her 40s when she um, was a contracted player up in, in Reno and playing for Harrah's Casino, she was contracted to play for the Sonny and Cher show. And then they canceled the show because they had just decided to split up. And she said, well, you guys still got to pay me. And Harris said, no, you're not gonna, we're not going to pay you. And she got mad and she sued them and said, no, I'm a contracted player and you're going to pay me. And she and won. She won. <laughs> and she won. And, that, and then she decided to enroll in law school and go back to law school and become an attorney. So she was always a steadfast fighter for what is right and, and, and doing what is fair. And, um, always admired her for all of that, and throughout all the time she played music, and she played for the San Jose Musical Theater. So I had, growing up, I got to grow up and see her play and go to shows. Then, my young daughter, Karenina, when she started playing for the San Jose Musical Theater, I got to take Karenina, and she got to grow up seeing her Aunt Beverly play 
her beautiful heart for the San Jose Musical Theater and, and go backstage and see all the lights. Now I'm addicted to musicals. Forever. <laughs> yeah, we're all addicted to musicals. <laughs> so again, I want to thank you guys. So I am so honored for all of you to be here and, and, and in her memory. And then I want to announce Introduce Dan sure. Levitan, and I'll have you introduce the musicians. Sure. One of the really important things I just want to mention, this is the harp that she played all of her life, and we have a young student, Sonia, and a young student, Sonia, who got the harp, Beverly's harp, and she's going to be playing on Beverly's harp. <laughs> Thank you.